The main character of House on Mango Street is a girl named Esperanza, and she's probably she's probably under 10 as the book begins, maybe eight, nine. Um, she's going to age throughout the book to be about 13, but you can think of her right now as being in that preteen child mentality. Things are very present tense and concrete, and she's just gonna show you her life. Here are some thoughts about her name. In English, my name means hope. You know, it really does. In English, we know people that are called hope, and her name is hope, but in Spanish. In Spanish, it means too many letters. It means sadness. It means waiting. It is like the number nine. When you think about it, the number nine isn't quite 10, is it? So she's got some very negative connotations about her name. Um, not hopeful, like, I can't wait for summer, but expectancy and it never arriving. A muddy color. Oh, that's kind of depressing. She thinks her name sounds like a muddy color. It is the Mexican records my father plays on Sunday mornings when he's shaving. Songs like sobbing. You think of kind of dramatic uh, Hispanic music, maybe a little opera. Um, ah, mi amor, Dios mío. I have no idea. I don't speak Spanish. Sorry. Songs like sobbing. It was my great-grandmother's name, and now it is mine. She was a horsewoman, too, born like me in the Chinese year of the horse, which is supposed to be bad luck if you're born female. But I think this is a Chinese lie, because the Chinese, like the Mexicans, don't like their women strong. That's a pretty interesting line for a young girl to say. I wonder if the author is having her say that because she is repeating what she's heard her mom say. You know, young kids often do that, just repeat the facts or politics that they hear right out of their parents' mouths. I wonder if it's just our author coming in with kind of that adult voice and trying to make a point. You know, hey, notice this thing about my culture. I want you to notice. You know, it's very unlikely that a young girl would actually be able to articulate that. She might feel it, you know, and sense a different treatment between men and women in our culture, but maybe not articulate, unless she's indeed heard it. My great-grandmother. Oh, check that out. We have a fragment, my friends. Just a little tiny non-sentence with a period. My great-grandmother. I like fragments because they really have personality, and they're kind of like how we really talk. You know, my great-grandmother. I would have liked to have known her. Yeah, that's the way we say things. Very conversational. Fragment. I would have liked to have known her. A wild horse of a woman. Wild horse of a woman. I like that alliteration. So wild she wouldn't marry. Until my great-grandfather threw a sack over her head and carried her off, just like that. As if she were a fancy chandelier. That's the way he did it. And the story goes she never forgave him. She looked out the window her whole life, the way so many women sit their sadness on an elbow. Probably putting their head in their hand and their elbow on a table, looking out the window, feeling trapped, okay? I want you to notice this idea of women looking out of windows with a trapped feeling. It's actually gonna show up over and over again um, in Mango Street, uh, windows as a motif, a repeating image, especially women that are trapped behind them. I wonder if she made the best with what she got or was she sorry because she couldn't be all the things she wanted to be. Esperanza. I've inherited her name, but I don't want to inherit her place by the window. Wow. Okay, that young girl knows something already. She's heard the story of her grandma, great grandma, and she knows that's not going to be me. I will not sit my sadness on an elbow. I'm just not going to do that, uh, which helps drive her personality. Okay, if you've listened to my video so far on your piece of paper or your electronic word processor, uh, draw me or find a clip art of a bowl of soup. Yeah, seriously. Draw me a bowl of soup or find some clip art and put it on there so that I know that you're actually listening to this and I'm not doing this just to hear myself talk. Okay, keep going. At school they say my name funny as if the syllables were made out of tin and hurt the roof of your mouth. You know, in plain old English, her name would sound like Esperanza. Yeah, it's not very attractive, Esperanza. But in Spanish, my name is made out of a softer something, like silver, Esperanza. 
not quite as thick as sister's name, Magdalena, which is uglier than mine. Magdalena, who at least can come home and become Nenny. But I am always Esperanza. I would like to baptize myself under a new name. I love that imagery. Uh, she's in a Catholic culture, and this idea of baptism as a rebirth. You know, children are so often looking for their identity, and she sees herself as wanting, you know, not only just to change her name, but, but almost a rebirth into a new identity. A name more like the real me, the one nobody sees. I can understand that. You know, what if your name doesn't really reflect who you are? And here's what she decides she wants her names to be. Esperanza as Lisandra, or Maritza, or Zeze the X. Yes, something like Zeze the X will do. And notice how the words she picks are quite vibrant. Lisandra to me sounds kind of soft and sweet. Uh, Maritza though, that's kind of dynamic, just the sound of it. Um, cocky, you know, outgoing. Zezi the ex is superhero. You know, Esperanza is kind of reimagining herself as somebody much more confident, much more bold, and she decides she's pretty happy with that. Okay, if you are in regular English 10, sophomore core, you can stop the video right now and go on and answer the questions. If you're in sophomore honors, I want to show you how, uh, just to model, okay, you've come to the end of a vignette, what are you going to do for your reading log? You know, what does that look like? So, you know, you have your big old page, or Word document, or maybe you're doing it right here in the book. Um, unlikely for those of you who are at home, but for my in-class students, some of them are doing it there. So, you know, here's my big old reading log. Um, I've done a lot of vignettes, and I come to this one, and I know that I need to do three things. First of all, I need to identify um, about one thing per page, just one of those little things, a metaphor, a fragment, a run-on, something like that. Um, I really like, I like how she says her name is like a muddy color, so I could say metaphor equals a muddy color. Got one. Um, oh, I liked that alliteration up there, wild horse of a woman. Okay, I've got my two things. Secondly, I need to fill out that very specific sentence. This vignette shows, reveals, demonstrates. You know, figure out the topic and then come up with a generic message about the topic. Um, we have a lot of things going on here. Um, this definitely shows that she's overheard or has an opinion about the way women are treated in, her, in the culture. Um, this is about names and it talks about how, well, let me do it for reals here. This shows that sometimes people may wish to express true identity, maybe perhaps by name change. I'm trying to make it nicely generic. You know, what, what am I learning about humanity? Sometimes people have identity crises. Sometimes their name doesn't seem to correspond with them. Um, sometimes, oh, and then I love that bit about her grandma, you know, learning the history of her name and then um, learning some life goals. So maybe something like, I've learned here that this vignette shows that you can make life goals based on your ancestors as you react to them. Sometimes people may wish to express the true identity perhaps by a name change. And then finally, I want you to do one open-ended vignette or annotation. I think that personal reactions, good questions. Um, I think I want to talk about, we've talked about most things, maybe, maybe how we can already see how she has some very flexible syntax with fragments like a muddy color, and I think my, my observation is going to be, hey, the fragments make it conversational sounding, which I already mentioned, but hey, it's my thought, so I can use it as my, as my third one. Um, okay, so then you're ready to go on to the next vignette. That's what we want. It should look about like that, okay, whether it's handwritten, whether it's typed, or whether you do it right in the book, okay? Hopefully that should help so you don't get the reading log all wrong. All right, bye-bye.